Welcome back. Thumbnail said it all. We are doing it. At least assembling just the lower part of the block. Not the head and stuff like that, but just the block for my daughter's 101 racing saw. Now some people are going to say, your daughter, how old is she? Yeah, she's seven. It is hers, but a lifetime to grow into it. Plenty of time. This is one of those, a 10-year build. But I can't wait 10 years on these kinds of things. So I just want to get the block assembled and show an assembly of a 101, specifically a 101B, but a 101 block in general. And uh, we got some special parts here and stuff like that. So well, I think I got all the tools here. I think I got everything. So I went ahead and took the liberty of pressing in the seal already cold outside I don't have a good tripod to show and everything so that was a three second job with the thanks of the help of the press so all right what we're doing we're going to be we got a piston got it from Terry Ives got that guy did this a while back I, I can't remember on what video I've done or anything like that but piston from Terry I've gapped the rings already and for those that are now just catching up, that is a billet rod from Quantum Racing. It's worth the money if you really don't want to blow your stuff up as easily because this is the weak link inside these engines. You get rid of this weak link here, you're going to be good and the rod bolts here are going to be more than sufficient to do the job. So when you go, it's quantumracing.com I think it is or something like that and they uh, they machine billet these out. Billet machine, yeah. Still, where's my coffee at? So, but you will need to use their. They comes with these the roller needle rollers. You have to use their piston pin when installing this assembly. As you can see, beautifully in there. Quarter inch rod bolts. Hex head. So, getting them in and out is pretty easy, hopefully. This is my first billet rod to install, but I know guys running them. And speaking of guys that I know running, a big thanks to Chris. That's all I'm going to say. So I think that's as far as he really wanted to go for that. And then for the, for the crank, and then thank you, Mike Nolan, for polishing, shot painting it, and making it look pretty much brand new again. And installing the bearings for me. I gotta take these seals out here so that oil can get to the seal. So these uh, dust caps, no biggie. So this crank is ready to go and be put in. Pretty nice, isn't it? Little, little tiny surface rust on it here. Stored it in the house and everything, but nothing that's. And I, this goes to maybe a 797 or something, but part number 6934. 6. So. It'll work. It'll do the job. So. Without further ado, go ahead and get things started here. Where do we start here? Cranks last. We need to get. All these little pins in and what you want to do there and also you want to grease this up real good this seal here make sure you grease it at least oil but grease a little regular automotive grease just on it just a little bit goes a long ways it's a double lip seal just a little bit of this kind of grease right here help things along cat hair everywhere now for the connecting rod bolts however I was told this by a guy in the carting world going to use petroleum jelly because it washes away faster so that the gas and oil mixture the oil that you're running gets to the bearings faster so you're gonna to want to put it together using this And being that this is open head, there, there's a couple ways you could try to assemble this, but open head 
is it's better to go from top it's better to go from top down rather than in this way obviously it's just much easier all around so let's hope that doesn't mess with me right there I just noticed that and that's on a flush surface I'm gonna have to file that down here real quick so we can have a nice flat surface for things to go up against so let me do that and then we will be right back and filed Ah, good old coffee. Yeah. Good to keep a good flat file in hand. Alright. Where were we? Yes, about this block also. I guess this Rob block belonged to a guy named Robin Bradshaw. And he's a well-known cart guy. So I got this off of eBay. I know nothing about it other than guys would stamp their names in it to at least try and keep people from stealing it as easy. But Bradshaw Mac number three. Don't know. The cutout on the walls on this suggests it was for a GM 12 valve intake so that it flows right through. And I have one that this saw is going to get. And it fits perfectly on that. So it fits the profile that it can get in there real easily. This block's only like 20 over. So lots of life left in it. I'm not hoping to throw a needle anytime soon, but that does happen. So, but yeah, port job, not done by me. That's Mike. Mike's job there. Transfers a little bit. So, big old boost ports. Rawr. So, all right, without further ado, so putting these needles in. Cap and this separated. And I'll be using a new old stock side cover here, and it's got a good uh, seal in it. It was sealed up and everything. This was sent to me also by Mike. And I'm gonna leave it yellow because all my saws, the racing ones, have something McCullough yellow on them, and this one it's going to be the side cover. Ugh. Organized all the tools and ooh, didn't realize we were torquing everything down so soon, people. <laughs> oh man, that's on there. I'm gonna have to get a pair of pliers and a rag on that here towel. because I don't want to leave tool marks. That's on there pretty good. I'm going to say that. I've never attempted to take that off, so. There we go. One. Two. You know, just pretend it's in a vise. That's what you got to do. Just wrap it up. a little bit up here so I have some swing space and a wacky guys yeah I think I had all the tools and everything ready to set this up so what is it gonna hope yesterday I had to get the hardware I didn't get back in time to start assembly on this so They look like they were like machined exactly for this for these like these are custom machined so I think they're going to hold up very nicely to this task before we take this off we need to hold on should have nope doesn't have marks on it oh wait yeah there it is I remember now no. I just love. No, this doesn't. See that right there? 
smooth grind mark. Just enough grind mark flat surface. So that's how you know to get your rod cap correctly. Rod caps should have little dots, dimples, and stuff like that. McCullough ones look like they broke it. So it only fits one way, but it was dimpled on one side. And uh, was done that way. So that you put it on the same every time. Oh, look at that. Even sleeved inside. Sleeved, so it just fits. I mean, it's a dead, perfect fit. There's no wobble whatsoever. That is awesome. So, I don't think I'm going to destroy this. And uh, Mike, it runs his with racing gas and stuff, and I mean, just puts it through the absolute, these handle alcohol and everything, it is just, this is awesome. It's so, alright, needles. Light coat on the piston, connecting rod I should say actually, just a light. All you're doing is holding it here, you're not doing actual lubrication for very long with it. I don't know, cap itself. Actually, hold on. One at a time here. How's that sound? This is where needle nose type of pliers or something. I got welding ones here. And thank you all who have supported my channel so far. We, uh, as I assembled this, I woke up this morning and 1,100 people. That is awesome. Thank you. I'm still trying to think of a name for the channel, but I think, based on some suggestions, either Brian's House of Max or just House of Max. I'm not sure yet, but those sound like pretty good ones. It's kind of how I'm known right now is for McCullough Saws. I think there's supposed to be 12 on each. Oh yeah, this is much easier doing it by finger. Let's get you guys over here. See if I can work over you. This is a pain in the butt kind of sort of to do. I mean, I probably should have put it inside the block first and done this, but we're going to go ahead and play experiment. Because putting the piston in is not that difficult on these. Just getting the rings and that's easy enough. So, that's kind of the process right there. Everything. Of doing this. Probably going to have them fall out on me and have to put it back in the block and redo it. Who knows. This is the most tedious of the whole process, I would say. Once it's together, it's a big sigh of air. You guys count them? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Ten. Eleven. It's not difficult, guys. You can do this. I got one guy with the... I don't know if he still watches in the background or not, but he's got a 430A gear drive, which we'll get back to in 77 later. He, uh, having the heck of a time getting, uh, the flywheel off. I said, bud, you can do this, man. You can do this. I'm right here. He messaged me after like six months and, or something like that, like it seemed like forever. And, a little extra on there just for holding. And he just... You know, he's like, hey, man, do you want this? You know, somebody want I'm like, I'm not giving up on you. And then he stopped messaging me, and I was kind of sad by that, so. All right, so this is your boost port side, your exhaust side. Remember that when you're assembling. Don't, don't mix that up. 
loose port charge comes up and it comes through the piston and into the two little loose ports that we saw and then they shoot up inside and so on and so forth it's there's good write-ups on it I'm trying to give you some decent link a little lengthier content here love but so for a little bit of time sake here, I'm going to get that one packed up with the rest of them. And then I'll bring you back for when we go to try to fit the piston in it and see how much it actually agrees with me on leaving the rod bearings in or if it just says nope. Be right back. Alright, who's ready to watch me struggle? First thing, lube up your bore. Don't put stuff in dry. Bad, 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 bad. Two-stroke, any two-stroke oil, probably about any oil, actually, but the two-stroke oil. Not here to destroy stuff. Yet. These rings are pinned. Brand new piston. And Terry said, yep, have one on the shelf for you. I'll send it to you. Okie dokie. All those greased up and good. So, all right, hands cleaned off here. Put you guys, I guess up there. I guess piston has to go first. Does it? Or do we want to? No, we want to do the crankshaft. We gotta tap that in. Yeah, crankshaft. What was I thinking? That's right, you gotta tap that into the block. So let's go ahead and get those seals. We'll just take a pick to it and pops right out. Look at that. Poppy poppies. Beautiful bearings. He packed them full of grease. So, soil's running great. We're going to go with that. Flywheel, PTO. Don't forget it. I wonder how easy this is going to go in for me. I was told by another mechanic. I've done this, but grease. Grease, grease, grease. Your bearings, when they go in, it makes it so much easier to go in. So let's go out. Don't go in drawer. Big old no no. So we'll lower down a little bit of grease on the outside. I wonder if I heat the block if it slides in easier, but I don't want to heat it up, so. You gotta clock this so that the crank can go in. It's where people might cringe on how installation. Kind of want to heat it up, but I also got the seal in there already, so. So. I know, people cringing. Let me live my life. Oh yeah, it's going in. It's going in really nicely. Slowly but surely. That's where I need a nice setup to sit here and just tap around. I don't have, I mean, I have a press, but I don't have a fancy, you know, kind of setup to work in it down so I need to build that I'll finish that up we're about halfway get cleaned up and we'll keep going sorry Bill I actually didn't take so long 
And it wasn't one of those, it was too easy to put in, but it wasn't difficult. And it wasn't going in crooked either. It went in nice and straight. I mean, it's it's in there. Turns. Not No difficulties. So, that's in there. All right. Our next goal, getting the piston in. Remember, boost port side. Ooh, don't do that. All right, everybody's lubed. If I can make the rod land straight down onto the crank. There's nothing here. The dirty stuff up. Not fit this in here before. Oh, oh, oh. oh that's scary how imperfect that is. Do you love when tolerances just line up? is centered good. Yep. The piston just needs a slight rotation, but it'll do that as we set as we set the uh, rings in. A little bit of down pressure. You just go around and press one ring. Probably didn't see that at all. Fat head. So we're going to do the second one. See, go around, and we're just pushing the ring in with slight down pressure with one finger, and then over here, and there's your second one. And we are also set on the crankshaft. Now, this is where it sucks. When you rotate it around, the needles want to come out on you. So. Very careful, keep a finger on it as you're rotating because they're going to want to pop out just one direction on you, at least most of the time. Bit right on there. Make sure you keep pressure on the piston down while you're rotating. And there you go. Alright, now you've got it set to bottom dead center. Now, we look for our marks again. Our grind side. I'm having a hard time seeing. Grind side is over here. Now we take our grind side on this one. Better in there. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. Now, 90 inch pounds is what we tighten these to, and we do it in steps. I do 30 pound. I kind of tighten it down a little by hand. Get the inch pound out and Tighten 30, 30, 60, 60, you know, kind of, I just like to really make it even. Probably more than overkill for the job when it comes to torquing evenly. But 90 inch pounds is our goal. That slid in just beautifully. I know there's guys out there build V8s and stuff like that, but this right here just, and I've held, I've, built you know help build rebuild a v8 and stuff with my stepdad and that was a nice learning experience when you're 12 years old and you're into engines and stuff that was uh that was nice so all right snug these up don't we all just love precision snug snug Make sure we turn. Mm hmm. I knew it. I knew it. We have to grind away some of the block for the rod to clear. I had a feeling we'll do that a little bit later. I really don't want to. Really don't want to rip this all apart again. But I can stuff everything. I knew it was going to have to be ground. Kind of had that feeling. When we get in there to grind it, we're going to stuff this full and grind it just enough because I want to know how exact and how close I can get things. I kind of had a feeling that was going to happen, but that's no biggie. We'll grind on that in a bit. 
keep stuff. We can clean it all out and everything and stuff. It'll just be aluminum. But we'll do a real good job. Some guys are like, no, I'll take it apart and do this. But, like, so. Yeah, I knew it. I'm surprised that uh, whatever was in here before. And it's just barely hitting, too. It's the cat bolts is what it is. They're, they stand so tall, so proud, standing up. But also the rod itself. So we'll go ahead, tighten it down, and then we'll have to grind that out for a nice smooth all around. So let me get set up here real quick, and we will be right back with that. What, 30 inch pounds? Maybe. Oh, you know what? Low setting on this one, it didn't like that. It doesn't like the low on this one for some reason. We'll take her up to 50 here. For some reason, it didn't like that. I remember that now. All right, click there. So we're at above 50 already. We're there on the money. There's 80. I'll double check with Mike and see what he's doing for, with these. Here's 90. I'll double check on him. Make sure whether it's 90 or we want to go to 110. It's 90 feel tight, but it doesn't feel... Like, I really started stretching those bolts in there, you know, real good and stuff like that. So, I'll, uh, I'll message him, and then off, and then, uh, off camera, I'll do that, and I'll let you guys know. So. Alright, so, go ahead, and I'll, uh, find out where that's wanting to touch over there and like I say it's just barely barely tapping so I'll get the grinder out I'm gonna stuff this thing with rag everywhere clean it out you name it the whole shebang it'll get done Right there is the spot. That's the money. Alright, get the Dremel out here, get stuff cleaned up, get the Dremel. And I'm going to shave it just enough to do it, but I want to keep, you know, the more you take out of the inside of it, the more, the less stuffing action you're going to have. So. And I'll put the stuffer plate on it too. We'll rotate that, make sure everybody clears, and it should, because it's all stock components. I don't have no super stuffer on this or anything like that, so I wish, but I don't. So, all right, get stuff cleaned up. Let's get the Dremel. All right, two seconds after that idea of not taking it apart, I decided to instead take it apart. So. Instead of going through that whole thing because I'm trying to keep a time and everything on this. Got that clearanced out here for the connecting rod. Had to Dremel down into it. And then this side up there. So everybody's happy. It clears. We can get full rotation on it. Block is clean. So I think... We're ready here 
pretty much have this block. I don't know if I want to install the side cover yet. I got to thinking about that too. I'm like, mm, maybe we should wait. Because I want to clean it up too. And everything. Maybe put that as body assembly on this. So that'll be part of the body, like the next main structure of it and everything. So I guess we'll just stick with the short block here, if that's what you can really call this assembly. Because the head I have to get, I'm going to get sent to get a decompression put into it just to make life easier. There's there's no reason to not make it easier on yourself to start a saw or something. It doesn't make you any less of a man or nothing to have it. It's just why put that strain on your body when you can put the ease in there and a decompression is not going to affect performance whatsoever. So, All right, I figure we'll just call that the end of this one. Assembly of the 101B. Daughter's 101 BA. So, yeah, take out a little bit there. So, apart together. Back apart together, however you want to call it. So, hopefully, everybody's going to be pretty happy here in the future on this one. So, I mean, intake valve sucks in, it presses up, suctions in, suctions here, here, down, here. I mean, it's got it everywhere. And then on the way down, ports are nice and wide open, exhaust is all the way open, boost ports are feeding into it, so I think she's going to breathe very nicely. Everything clearances, everybody's happy, I don't see anything touching that shouldn't be, hope not. So, alright, so I'll say, thanks for watching, and uh, I don't know how next time we'll be getting onto this saw. This is kind of one of those rainy day ones. Get in between. Uh, still finalizing parts for the 77. Uh, I'll dig up in the loft and look for the 1,000 thousand, uh, sub giveaway. We'll go up there and look for that. And I'll try to get a video of that. See how well it runs and everything. If it's a good runner and everything, then we're going to get ready to go on that cleaner up. And I'll see if I can find a bar and chain for it if I can find one. Hanging on the wall, something decent, I guess. Something that somebody could just take out of the box, cut, and have fun with. So, Alright, say, thanks for watching. I don't think I forgot. Stuffer plate. See if anybody makes contact. And it isn't jumping up or anything. And here's an example of a jump up. Hear that? It's making contact with the the desk. So the stuffer. We don't have that. Better than the rod, but it's not smacking it. And there will be a gasket between the two of them too. So gotta remember that. I'm curious. Desk as a head. Will it make compression? I can hear it pushing air from around it. Ooh, yeah. Got a little bit of suction. So, ah, yep. So, I think this block is good and ready to go. She is lubricated very well for storage purposes. Yeah. PV stuff works great. Multi purpose lubricant. So. All right. Don't say. All right. Now, thanks for watching. And uh, hopefully we'll get more of this sooner than later. Kind of one of those that just, just takes off. Side cover I've got a gasket for. I made that and stuff. So we'll get more as we go.